Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Nana from Indonesia. I was born and raised in Indonesia. But I had a, um, a good chance that I studied uh, for my university in the United States. And when I returned back to Indonesia from the uh, United States uh, from my study in urban design, I had this vision of creating a green city. But little that I know, I had no idea how to start. And um, until a few years after that, I worked with a group of incredible uh, geologists, which made me realize that geological knowledge is very important in my field. At that time, I was working as regional planner. And as you know, Indonesia is the most earthquake-prone country in the world. That's why we are called the Ring of Fire. We were a concise colliding of three plates in the world. So earthquake is our everyday life. And also we have many volcanoes, uh, active volcanoes uh, in throughout the region. So having this knowledge actually um, has helped me understand the importance of uh, where we build the city and also what kind of cities that we are going to build in this very front area. And a few years after that, I had another uh, incredible chance. I was called by the largest uh, conservation organization, the World Wildlife Fund, to help out on the relief effort after the big, the largest tsunami in the world, the largest earthquake and tsunami in the world, which happened in the northern part of Sumatra. And I was called to go there in the region called Aceh. This earthquake is, uh, was 9.0 uh, in uh, Richter scale, and um, followed by the tsunami that went across the Indian Ocean from Asia to Africa. So you can imagine the devastated area. My challenge was to actually um, conduct a program, what is called green reconstruction. It was a very difficult task because, as you know, after the disaster, everybody wants to have everything in, um, in the rapid uh, process. And, and at that time, there's like about 500,000 people lost their houses. So the most challenges was how to build the, the houses in the very short term. But little that people know that we had challenge on uh, the resources, especially the timber. So at that time, I run the campaign, it's called Sustainable Timber or Timber for Aceh. So the green reconstruction itself is to make sure that all the rehabilitation and the reconstruction after disaster is not going to damage in the future the environmental and ecological balances. And this uh, initiative, the green reconstruction, has been replicated in other disaster part of the world because the next year after that, there was a big earthquake in Pakistan and they actually like also like uh, replicate this program over there and also it's been used in Haiti after the earthquake. So I realized after, I, um, after several years involving in this that actually I've been uh, practicing my faith all along. As I was taught when I was uh, growing up that in my belief, all human beings are guardians of this earth. So therefore, we have to live in harmony with it. And I want to tell you the story of Jakarta. As it was mentioned that I, I come from Jakarta, I grew up there. And in 2008, there was a crisis in the city. In the beginning of 2008, the, the road, uh, the access from the city to the airport, which is about 30 kilometers, was covered by water. It was flooded. So the access was blocked. This is the most largest and busiest airport in the whole country. It's called Sukarno Hatta International Airport. So you can imagine the city is, was put in a standstill for about a week. This is the capital of the nation. So 
from that on, I realized that a lot of uh, climate change uh, effect uh, has been going on in the world, and also that climate change is uh, the cause and will be the cause for more and more disaster in the future. And besides that, also we are facing of pop uh, with population density in Jakarta and also uh, pollution in our water and air, and also like lack of greenery, uh, the green space, we're having the lack of green space because of the po uh, population. Jakarta consists of approximately 20 million people, so you can imagine, it's a very large city covering 660 uh, square meters. So most of this problem uh, that we're facing is uh, blamed to the lack of uh, government officials uh, having the uh, firm strategic planning. They tend to fix the problem as it comes, uh, as it pops up. So uh, looking at those uh, uh, challenges and uh, taking my experiences with the geological issues, with uh, working in disaster area, I and uh, I call upon um, my colleagues, the urban uh, professional, who wants to volunteer and do something for the city, do something to make changes. So we form what we call a citizen coalition for Jakarta 2030 in, uh, in the year 2010. Why 2030? Because at that time, the government of the city was conducting a process to uh, renew the plan for uh, the next 20 years. But they forgot to actually involve the people. So our, uh, our uh, message was to ensure that the people is, uh, is uh, involved on this process. Um, first, we did the survey of 20,000 people. That was the first time in the history of the Indonesian cities to have uh, a survey uh, of the people on what they think about the city, what they dream, what they're concerned. The result is not uh, surprising. Most of the residents was apathetic. They didn't really care of what's going on. But then we, um, we formed some uh, public meetings, public workshop to gather people from different uh, economic classes that this is the future of your city. You live here, and the next 20 years, your children will, be, will live here also. And if you don't care, then who's going to care? At that time, I was having a problem with the governor. The Jakarta is, is, uh, is led by a governor. He said that, you know, it's, it's just wasting of time to actually involve the people. But I told him, if you want to ask how the shoe fits, ask the people who wear it not the maker. So then he actually, hmm. So at that time, um, he started to think that how actually uh, involving people uh, in the process of visioning the city and also uh, public participation is very important in creating uh, a sustainable city and sustainable uh, communities in the future. So looking at that, actually people when we touch them uh, closely, they do have, uh, they do care for their city. Just sometimes they don't know what to do. Um, from that, actually, like our movement, we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, expect anything in the beginning as we didn't know what to come about. But what we've done actually has been replicated to other cities in Indonesia. So other people, other community actually form their own coalition, and one is the city of Bogor in West Jaffa, and uh, it's a, it's a middle-sized city, and then in Jogja also, in central Jaffa, middle-sized city, and Surabaya, which is a large city in Indonesia. So this is, has been replicate, replicated, and I'm hoping it's, been, it's going to be replicated across, uh, across the, the nation. And um, this is also to show that people still have heart, they still have, uh, they still care uh, of their future, and this is a good sign because that is how you start talking about sustainability for the future. And just recently, I moved uh, to San Diego, California, 
to live with uh, my husband. And I want to bring all my experience also to this. So recently, I'm involved in uh, what is called Urban Community Garden. I'm very excited, and I hope that I can contribute also based on my experience working with community, uh, uh, urban community uh, in, Indonesia, in Indonesia to bring to, to where I live now in California. And um, I believe that uh, we can actually work together and collectively we can make changes for the future. Thank you. <laughs>